What's up, guys? John Gabby, we're back. So, you know, there is a lot happening in the world, and we touched on it a little bit um, at the start of the of the episode, and we talked about it last week. Look, the world is going through a major transformational change right now. At least we hope that it is. Um, all of the senseless um, violence and and killing of black citizens at the hands of police agents of the state, you know, it it. It, it is problematic and it has been problematic for 400 plus years. And, you know, we talked about it again last episode, but there are things that are happening all around. And a couple of things caught my eye, particularly through the sneaker, sneaker community, Gabby. And I wanted to talk about it today. The first one being, you know, in Ohio, um, the owner um, of a sneaker boutique store, um, Deontay Johnson, Soul Classics in Columbus, Ohio, he wrote an op-ed for Complex. And in part of it, he said, on Friday, May 29th, during the protests, my store was broken into and looted by people looking for personal gain, disgusted as members of a group with a unified message of peace, justice, and equality. On Thursday night, we received word that protesters would be in the area, so me and a cousin guarded our belongings from 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. We would finally go on to retire for the night. The next day, we planned on getting back to the shop around 10, so I decided to take an hour-long nap to recharge my batteries and prepare for another long third shift. 15 minutes before my alarm was set to ring, my phone began to vibrate from an 800 number. My heart immediately sank. As I answered, I quickly ran to grab my keys. And my worst assumptions were realized. As the operator asked me if I wanted the police to be sent, I responded yes, hung up, and raced to my store. And obviously, he went there and saw the, 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 the damage and the looting that happened. And he goes on to say, if I have to lose a few shoes in the process in order to get the attention of those in power who can invoke change, I can live with that. I can die with that on my conscience. And that really struck out to me. This is a black owner of a store. Um, and for him, you know, it's so real because the, the state sanctioned murders are happening to, to his community, our community, people that look like us. And, you know, this sneaker boutique store, this is this man's livelihood. So it's not like, oh, well, like <laughs> if I lose some stuff, it's all good. Like, no, like this is this man's, this is how he provides. But he is so down for the cause that, look, if it means I got to lose some shoes, I'll rebuild, I'm fine. The property damage is not as important as what we are fighting for. And what we are fighting for is equality for black people under the law. And, you know, what, again, what I just find so incredible and so amazing is the ability and the conviction on his heart, right, to be able to have that kind of belief. And he was clear, right? It's not, it wasn't about people, the, pro, the, the people who were unified in the message of peace, as he said. It was people looking for personal gain disguised as members of a group. Because that's what's happening to people who are looting mm-hmm. and taking the merchandise for themselves. They're pretending to be people who were down for the cause to then walk and march and then use that as a, as a method and a means to, great, let me go grab and steal these shoes and be an opportunist. Because anyone who was actually uh vandalizing and not stealing it isn't about me wanting to take from my personal gain again as we talked about on last week's episode it's about you not hearing what i'm saying and i'm tired of the literal the literal boot on the neck of my throat i'm tired of it and i'm gonna make sure you hear me and i think the media is not doing the best job of really differentiating that and i know again we talked about this a little bit last week but i think there's a big difference between people who are looting for self-serving purchases who say like the guy who's taking a rolex off of madison avenue and breaking down their windows to the person who is peacefully protesting but isn't being heard and maybe is like listen you're not hearing us so we're doing this to make more noise. To me, those are very different things. And I hate that everything gets lumped together just because, I mean, I was a part of the protest in Hoboken and it was beautifully done. The amount of people that came out, the way that everyone band together, there was no looting, there was no rioting. And I think because there was a, a space for everyone to be heard, it didn't come to that. But it's, it's really sad for me seeing the people that are taking advantage of this. I was reading something online the other day, even about this YouTuber who looks like Zach Morris, basically. Mm-hmm. And he... <laughs> Saved by the Bell. <laughs> I know. Love Saved by the Bell. But <laughs> it was... I'm, I'm glad that they are putting media traction behind this because they basically were like, this 
stupid kid is stealing shit just to steal stuff. Sorry, I get very passionate. No, no, no. A little bit sometimes trying to contain myself, but <laughs> I'm glad that they're finally talking about the difference in what's happening there. I mean, I think us being New Yorkers, Kith said something similar to Deontay Johnson, where they were like, you know what? If that's what it takes to get heard, it's the message that's important. And I, I love seeing a lot of these local stores and store owners. Um, I mean, Kith has a lot of national notoriety but and global notoriety, but it's still a local store for us in New York. And seeing all the local businesses really band together is a beautiful thing. Like, based out of Cleveland, uh, Run With The Winners is a local organization, and they have a, a weekly running club. Follow them on Instagram. We'll tag them when we start posting this content. But using the hashtag run for change, every mile that's logged with that hashtag attached, they're donating a dollar to those in need and to those who are getting in jail for protesting. So I think that's a really cool cause. And it's good to see these local brands and national brands really stepping up to the plate. Um, I, I know it's really hard to sometimes see the rainbow in the storm, but I think that's what we're here to talk about what brands are really doing. So it's yeah. great to see no, and, and, I, and I'm right there with you, Gabby. Look, I, it's very easy to be cynical. We talked about it, like, and I can be as cynical as anybody else. And I'm like, are these guys, these brands just putting out self-serving statements to help their bottom line and yada, 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 and all that. And we talked about on the last segment about how we would love it if, you know, for the, the Nike, the athletes that have um, signature shoes, if for the Black History Month, if they re-release those now when the league starts up again and use the proceeds of that or proceeds from like specific merch mm -hmm. about Black Lives Matter or or uh, police brutality and ending racism against black people, like those kinds of things, if they would use the proceeds off of that to continue to fund uh, black, yep. Li black Lives Matters organizations and organizations really aimed at stopping police brutality and, and systemic racism in this country, that would be awesome. Um, we don't know if they have plans to do that, but we do know that a lot of brands do have plans to do some great things, right? Absolutely. For instance, we know that Vans, everybody remember Vans, those like uh, skateboardy kind of shoes that, that, that people used to wear back in the day? They're having a moment. They are not just back in the day, Drod. I am not a band wearer myself, but maybe I need to be. I mean, I have friends from everywhere I know that rock bands in different colors and patterns. Yeah. So they're very current. And, and, and bands, bands put out a statement, and they're donating $100,000 to the NAACP, $50,000 to Color of Change, and $50,000 to the GSA Network. And they put out a statement that basically said, there is no place for hatred or bigotry in our family. We stand in solidarity with the community. Black Lives Matter. We all have a duty to dismantle racism, create change, and help carry this weight. We know we have a lot to learn, and we must continue to look inside and out for ways to support every member of the black community, right? And, like, that's, that's a you know, a company like Bands doing something like that, that's a big deal. Um, we all know about Nike. Nike is committed to pledge $40 million to support black communities, and it's going to be shared between Nike, Jordan Brand, and Converse. Um, the three brands under the Nike umbrella, you know, they had that Don't Do It ad um, that came out right as... As all the protests and uh, uh, protests were swelling at the, the death mm -hmm. of uh, the murder of George Floyd at the hands of the Minneapolis Police Department, and you know Nike CEO John Donahoe said, "Systemic racism and the events that have unfolded across America over the past few weeks serve as an urgent reminder of the continued change needed in our society. We know Black Lives Matter. We must educate ourselves more deeply on the issues faced by Black communities and understand the enormous suffering and senseless tragedy racially racial bigotry creates." And again. The connection for sneakers is so much of the sneaker culture is about black culture, right? Because that's in essence where it starts. Basketball, streetwear, those hip hop, those kind that that is where all of this stems from. And again, if you are someone who consumes this culture and you are not black, you have to ask yourself, okay, am I in support of this community and the people who give me this culture I love so much, or do I just love the culture but I don't care about the people who help give me this culture, right? And that's something that I mm -hmm. think people people should be looking at. And um, the other one is Jordan Brand and Michael Jordan announced over the next 10 years, they're going to donate $100 million um, to various organizations that, again, are, are aimed at stamping out um, racial injustice, systemic racism um, in this country. Again, we talked about this happening for 400 years. And look, can you say that Nike and Jordan Brand and these companies can do more? Sure. <laughs> you can... They, they can always do more. But if this is the start of actual real change and it's not just lip service and they're going to back up their words with action at the community and grassroots level and really do some things, then, yeah, I, I think this is a wonderful step in the right direction. But it is a step, right? This whole Absolutely. systemic and seismic change and revolution we're talking about, 
It's everybody doing multiple things, right? It's the companies, the corporations donating hundreds of millions of dollars. It's us protesting in the streets. It's us voting, not just voting and stopping there, voting and holding those elected officials accountable. Oh, you said you're going to do this, this, and this. It's been a year. I haven't heard anything. We're not going to vote you back. It's, it's consistent work because that's what it means to be a functioning member of society. Absolutely. And I think to your point, uh, these are sizable donations from Nike, but Nike has some big shoes to fill. I mean, they are one of the biggest market share out there. So I know a lot of that. Yeah. And a lot of that falls on on their shoulders to lead the charge, you know. But I, I think to your point, any bit is still a bit in the right direction. All it takes is one step to keep moving forward. And I love that brands like New Balance, you know, donated 10,000 pairs of sneakers on Global Running Day last week to Atlanta for Ahmad. You know, I think it's, it's great that we're using these holidays and days that normally are just for fluffy Instagram posts, like Global Running Day. Sure, it's cool. We're all runners. But like, let's be relevant and stay woke and be part of the conversation and do good. Yeah. So props to New Balance for that. And I just, I think like, a lot more of the smaller brands are going to realize that they can still get involved, you know, no just because you might not have the size of a Nike making a statement, doing something, keep taking it off social media and, mm-hmm. and doing Action. something I think is, is the big thing. Like, like this is what we always say. Don't just talk about it. Be about, be about it. it. <laughs> no, you're, right. you're, well, you're 100 percent correct there, Gabby. And that's the big thing. A lot of these companies can put out statements and say whatever. And sure, you can write some checks. Cool. We love all that. What's the work you're going to do? What's the action? What are the actual steps you're going to take? Because it's not just one. As I said before, it's everything. And Adidas also put out a statement and they got themselves in a bit of hot water because one of their um, associates, the Adidas Originals Assistant Apparel Director, Julia Bond, sent a note to the brand's North American leadership. And it basically said, you know, my existence at this existence at this brand is praised as diversity and inclusion. But when I look around, I see no one above or around that looks like me. I can no longer stand for Adidas' consistent complacency and taking active steps against a racist work environment. This is not business as usual. Um, you know, and I think that that's, that's a moment, right? Because she put herself out there. And I don't know Adidas. I mean, I know Adidas. I don't know what Adidas' work culture is like because I don't work there. I'm going to believe this woman because this is, you gotta, you believe people when they tell you things, right? She came out, put this on record. This is what Adidas has done. Adidas obviously had a statement about, you know, saying that they're, you know, stand behind George, the, the you know, they, they stand in support of black lives and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think what you're finding from a lot of black people is we're saying, look, you all say these words, but in our everyday interactions with you, that's not what your actions tell us. They don't tell us you care about diversity. You don't care about inclusion. You don't care about any of these things because when we have issues or whenever these things happen, it's the same old business as usual. So don't use this as an opportunity just to be like, let me write a good PR message and sound great as a company, but I'm not actually doing anything. And I'm not actually here for any kind of real change. And look, sneakers, as we know, Gabby, are, they're a gateway to so many things, right? Like mm-hmm. we love them and it's like sports. It can, in a way, and I don't like to use this about sports because people are like sports is a great unifier. I don't always believe that. Yeah, if you are root for the same team, they're a great unifier. If you don't, it's the number one divisive thing there is. But if there is a way that your love for the culture of sneakers and everything around it can be a spark for something, that is a good thing. And again, these brands can't just talk. They got to be because you see, according to Julia Bond, Adidas, you talking, but you're not being about what you're talking. Right. And I get I give Julia a lot of credit to stand up because it's very easy to post something on social media even to go to a protest, but to come at a place that could compromise your livelihood and potentially blow up your life. I mean, Cap did the same thing, Colin Kaepernick. I mean, he is, oh, like a legend, you know, and a lot of people gave him a lot of flack for that. But I think that the things that are worth, most worth doing are worth it. Mm-hmm. And they're hard. If you, you can't risk change if you're not willing to risk it all, honestly. I, that, and that's where change comes from. It's like right now is a very weird time where, you know, a lot of people are not okay with being uncomfortable and putting themselves in uncomfortable situations. And it's great seeing these brands like it's okay to be uncomfortable. Good things and change don't happen in your comfort zone. So props to you, Julia. Like, And putting yourself out there, keep speaking up because – you know, if we talk about the sneaker culture and the sneaker community, we have to do what we talk about. 
Agreed. 100%. Yeah. You could have said it better. And I, I'm, I'm with you there. You again, it's about the actions, man. You can say and say and say, but what are you doing? What is what is the are you doing the work? Right. Remember when you were a kid and you'd be like in math class or whatever, and you have to you have the answer, but your teacher would like dock, dock points if you didn't show your work. It's like, great, you got here, but show your work. Right. It's the same thing. Yep. Show your work, man. Let's see what you're doing yep. out here. The limit does not exist. <laughs> Shout out to me. girls. <laughs> we're going to be back with a little fun segment to wrap up this show. So stay tuned. Peace. 